Hey, opposing good day, everybody. This is Sports Time News. I'm Jabroy. Please hit subscribe down below. Up above on the easiest widget. Keep scrolling to the goal of 260 or more by the start of July. But let's get into it. This is going to be on the Boston Bruins. As we look at their offseason, as the biggest thing is Patrice Bergeron. Of course, Tuka Ross tried to come back last season, and Ras did not come back. And their picks, just like the last two teams, or unlike the last two teams, I should say, that I did in the Coyotes and Ducks, they don't really have picks. They have one second, one third that's from the Calgary Flames. They do have a first in next year's draft, so to make up for not having a first in this year's draft, and a draft that everybody's raving about for the right reasons, next year's draft, the Brewers do have that pick. Now, going into their overall team, the biggest thing for them is, is Patrice Bergeron good to come back? Is Bergie, who's a Selkie, one that just named the damn trophy after him moving forward, is he a guy that's going to be coming back? He's a guy that just consistently wins them. Um, their team as a whole wasn't the sexiest constructed team if you look at name brand, <coughs> Obviously, <coughs> Pasta, excuse me, Marshan, even Taylor Hall uh, is a pretty good player at this point of their careers. So, it kind of works that way. Hompus Lindholm, I think, actually fits into the Bruins well. A bigger defender can block shots, do some things. He kind of fills that role, not ever to the degree of the Hall of Famer Dana Chara could, but somewhat filled part of those holes missing from when they lost to Dana Chara. Brandon Carlo, obviously, is a great defenseman, so is McAvoy. So I think they're good on the back end, especially with Grizzly coming back. Four bunch of good defensemen. Riley's all right for three million bucks, a little bit overpaid, but a good defenseman. Uh, and then Zaboral's a good defenseman that's on a good contract, and then they have Clifton. So I think their problem with their defense is they don't necessarily have a true number one, but they have pretty solid mixed-in defense. I think they might look to try to get that true number one. Come to defense, I'm more confident, just like I was with Ottinger a few years ago with Dallas. I love Jeremy Swayman. I think he's going to become a freaking baller stud muffin uh, starting goaltender in the league. And then Linus Allmark's going to be a good guy that platoons. I think this platoon is going to be very good until Sway is able to kind of take it and take the bull by the horns and kind of sway into the win, pun intended, and be that great goaltender that he's supposed to be. Linus Allmark, I do think for $5 million bucks, if he can play, he did this year stay healthy and do well. I think that's fine because Olmark's a guy that always just had health concerns. He's kind of become the new age Michael Neuvirth. When he's healthy, he's fine. When he's not healthy, he's not helpful for anybody. So the fact that he stayed healthy this year, he was a good goaltender as long as he can continue doing that. I think he's going to be a good goaltender in this league because there's no reason not to believe so from his track record when healthy. Swayman, playing for Team USA a little bit, of course, did good over there in the world. Got to thank him for that. But Swayman, I think is a guy that's just going to continue to progress, 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 just like his fellow USA counterpart, Jake Ottinger, has continued to progress, 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 excuse me, and get better and better. So the Bruins, for me, are set up at goaltending. They're set up at defense. Forward core minus the posture knocks, more shans, and Taylor Hall does leave a wee bit to be desired. So you might want to do some things there when it comes to your forward core. But... <clears throat> I don't think they have to do a lot to the defense minus maybe get a guy. And I don't think you're going to see the Bruins spend big on like a Chris Tang. If they do, that would be huge for them. But I think it would be more one of those number one defensemen that's kind of a number one defenseman is in your bringing them in from another team in a trade. One of those guys, uh, so to speak, than a guy that's just that flat out big bombastic guy that you still is a number one even going on 36 or 37, whatever it is, Latang. Still could be considered that. But I think the biggest thing is getting uh, forward depth. If they get forward depth more, especially if <clears throat> um, Patrice Bergeron is back, because Charlie Coyle then is slated as your number one center, Hala, Nosek, and Steen. So they're very weak down the middle, and they need to get some forward depth. The culture, I think, in Boston is very strong. Sweeney, I think this is his last hurrah. That's why he got rid of Cassidy, tried to change it up a little bit, because kind of just the same old same old. You know, I don't know why the hell he got rid of Cassidy, because he did good this year, but he wanted to kind of change the mojo, I guess. So we'll see what happens there. All in all... I'm still confident the Bruins, if they can have a good offseason because of the great culture that team has, are going to have a chance to do something. Next year, obviously, they bring back Bergeron. That really helps them. Other than that, they don't really have to bring back any of their UFAs. They really just have to bring back Bergeron. Um, <clears throat> and then Mark McLaughlin was a good signing in the minors. Luco, I think, is a good player out of check. Uh, Coppedin is also a solid big boy that takes water to develop. He's probably going to be up by 25, 26, maybe doing some pounding things in the fourth line. So I think they have some guys. They don't have that bombastic prospect. They got their cons that might be able to make it. They don't have that bombastic guy right on the cusp, but they do got Harrison, who might be good in time. Kantar, who might be good in time. Olsen, who might be good in time. Uh, 
Mason uh, Larray, who might be good in time, and that that's a little bit of a sooner time. Maybe by age 23, he's a bigger guy at defense. Maybe even a little bit sooner than that. And then Mason Langenbrunner, everyone knows who what family he's from. Uh, he's only 19 years old, needs a little bit of time to develop. But they have guys that are great. Put, fill out your roster prospects, which the Bruins have always been good at doing, like with the Jake DeBrus of the world. I don't know if they're they necessarily having those guys unless somebody really ascends the next Morshan. I don't see it on the outset yet, but, you know, things happen over time, and that's why hockey so unpredictable in sports in general. It's a probability game when you're predicting the prospect development rate, and we'll have to see what happens with the Bruins. But all in all, I think their biggest thing is add to the forward depth. And then maybe a top defenseman, but I do think their defense score is good enough because they have freaking Jeremy Swayman, who I think is going to be great, and they have Olmark, who I think is a good, at least, B goaltender. So peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below or above them. The easy to use widgets. Keep sounding good to the goal of 260 or more by the start of the game.